God, he's a great man of God, and I love him so very, very much, and I know he's going to bless us this morning. Amen? Go for it, Joe. Thank you. Man. Joseph. Well, I had um, <clears throat> something ready which is entirely different, and the Lord showed me to a different setup. Last two weeks ago, I preached on, um, how many remember what I preached on? I remember because I, I got it written down. <clears throat> the importance of um, understanding the church. We talked about what is the church and why we are here and what we are supposed to be doing. Today, um, I still want to go on with the same subject, but um, because this is a subject that doesn't have an ending somewhere, somehow, you can really go through the Word of God and talk about the church, and you can talk about for days and days to come. But uh, I'm not going to do that. First of all, I believe that what I like to share with you is to uh, teach you or to um, make you uh, understand uh, how to, what is the method, how to be able to remember the Word of God. What's the biggest problem that we have when we go to church is that fact that after the preacher is over, we go and get coffee. By the time we go home, we have completely forgotten what uh, was on in church and we just do not remember. So, probably because we do not put enough emphasis in remembering. The first thing that we have to do is to uh, be in the Spirit. That is important. The second thing is that we have to take notes. Take notes. Put down something, some paper, somewhere. Things that comes into your mind. Things that have been said. And you take notes, and then when you go home, don't throw the notes away. Just go over it and learn about it. And uh, if there is scriptures, look for more scriptures and let the Holy Spirit lead you into that particular uh, thing. It is important that when we go home to study what we, have, uh, what we have heard or what we have learned. That's why when you go to school, they give you homework because so that you can remember. By doing that, our spirit, uh, our spirit is concerned about the things that are happening, and uh, our mind will retain, because our spirit works as well. We are interested in what we are doing, because we are searching the scriptures or whatever, and, we, uh, and, and our spirit will retain what we have, uh, what we have received. And that count goes back into our memory. And years later, but you don't even think about it, but you are talking about the subject and the memory from the back will bring up, drive into your words, and you have words in your mouth that um, you never thought you really had them. But they are there because you have put them there. Actually, you haven't. The Holy Spirit has put them there because He wants you to remember. It is very important. You find that there are many scriptures that talks about uh, retaining the Word of God and make the Word of God our main aim in life. But uh, after all of that, let us go back to whatever we have to talk about this morning, and that is we talk about the church. Last Sunday I said why uh, we go to church, but uh, or why church, why it's so important. Today we take a different way, a different approach. The approach is that why am I in church? Now I would like to ask you a question. Why are you here? Because it's Sunday morning? So there must be a reason why we go to church. Why am I in church? Some people believe that they uh, don't need to go to church. It is not important for them to go to church, for they can worship at home. The Lord 
we'll wor- you can worship the Lord at home. I had a, a man in my church in, um, in New York, which he was missing for quite some time. And then I went to see him and I said, how come you're missing? Well, he said, brother, I don't have to come and listen to you. He said, I can turn on the radio and the TV. And he said, and I have so many preachers there that I have a choice. If I come to church, I have to listen to you. And if I, go, if I turn the TV, he said, well, then I have a choice. And that was, I said, that's very fine. Do that. But the next time you don't feel well, please don't call me. Hug the, ch- hug, hug the TV. And, uh, and uh, ask the TV to help you. He said, I, I, I'm not going to be there. Why are we are in church? We are going to church because we cannot do at home what we do in church. We cannot worship at home the way we worship church. It is, it is, it, it, the church is regarded as very important in the Old and also in the New Testament. We must to remember that the first miracle in the Word of God, the very first miracle after Jesus Uh, was resurrected and was taken up to happen. It happened by Peter and John going where? They were going to church. Now Jesus left. Why did they want to go to church? Now because they were going to the temple, but the temple of the Old Testament is the church of the New Testament. And therefore, let me call that particular time that they were going to the temple, they were going to church. And the first miracle happened while they were going to church. Now, I wonder why next Sunday when you come to church, something is going to happen. And the first miracle in your life that you're going to see is going to be while you are going to church. It doesn't happen at home, but it happened while you are out there. That is Acts of the Apostle, chapter 3, verse 1. Now, Peter and John went up together into the temple in the hour of prayer being the ninth hour, and there that's where the first miracle miracle happened. The first thing that we must uh, remember is to hold not, uh, um, we are told not to forsake the assembly because there, there we have exhortation, we exhort one another, we uh, encourage one another, we stimulate one another, we learn from one another experience. That's why I am going to church, so that I can learn from you and you can learn from me. We are learning together. We are learning before the presence of God what the Spirit does. We are spiritual people. Therefore, the Lord works in me in a spiritual way. The Lord works in you in the spiritual way. The Lord works in you in the spiritual way. And that spiritual way in which he works, which is different from each and every one of us, when we come together, we share together, and we praise God for the greatness and the magnificent work in which God is doing. God is a great God. But if I limit God just to myself, it becomes a small God. God. I must enlarge my heart. I must enlarge my spirit. I must enlarge my ways so that my God becomes your God and your God and my God is a big God. This is teaching, but I have been known. I was teaching in the seminary. I was teaching history. History, nobody wanted it. When we went to look for who was going to teach what, and they said nobody wanted history because it's a boring thing. But then I got excited even teaching history. So don't worry about me getting excited. I, I am that way. <clears throat> So we are going to church, we are going to forsake, we are told not to forsake the assemblings together because there is where we exhort one another, we encourage one another, we stimulate one another, and we learn from one another experience. Hebrew chapter 10 verse 25. Not forsaking the assemblage of yourself together, as manner of some is, some do, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, for you know that the day is approaching. We have a lot to encourage ourselves, because we are living in the last days. 
And because we are living in the last days, we need encouragement so that we can make it over the hill and be go, go and be with the Lord forever. In Psalm, Psalm 133, verse 1, it says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell, to dwell together in unity. We are not coming to church to be disunited. We are coming to church to be as one. We must revive in us the desire to dwell in the house of the Lord, to behold His presence and to receive His advice for a victorious life in the world. We cannot live a victorious life unless we can get hold of the, we can hold of God and we can do that when we are together and as we are encouraging one another. Psalm 24, verse four, uh, 27, verse 4. And this one thing I desire of the Lord, that I will seek after, that I may dwell in, uh, this I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire from His temple, why do I go to church? So that I can behold the beauty of the Lord. Because when we are sharing with one another, I can see the beauty of the Lord, how He's working in your life and how He's working in my life. And I behold and I get encouraged. David knew that his strength in life came from the Lord. His victory came from inquire, to inquire from the, from the Lord. We go to church to learn to walk in the light. We know to know one another, to have fellowship with, with the saints. That's why we are going to church. There is no other way, my friend. That is the reason for us to go to church. Uh, John, first, first John 1 John 1.7, he says, But we, if we walk in the light, as he is light, we will have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son, will cleanse us from all sin. Now that's important to have fellowship, isn't it? It's important because we are going to be cleansed. Now, when we go to church, we don't agree with everything. That's true. I mean, I'm different than you, you're different than me. Thank God for that. I don't want to be like you. And I don't think you want to be like me either. So we are different. And because we are different, we have disagreement, don't we? So, but if we, have, uh, if we do not agree in all things, but the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sins and clears our disagreement, it makes us a new family in the Spirit. That's what it's important. It is not important that I disagree with you. But what is important that the blood of Jesus will clear the fair whatever is going between you and me. And he will give us what is necessary. And he will give us what is necessary so that we can, uh, we can uh, experience the fullness of the love of God. We learn that the early church was full of power because, first of all, they fellowship together, together. They knew each other by name. They knew each other more than just the first name. They knew each other. And they and the love of God was in them. So they went to church or to the temple. And also they went in each other's house by breaking bread. There was a fellowship there that it did not end up as soon as they left the church. But it was continuously within them and through them so that they were visiting each other. Now I know that some preachers say that they were going from house to house and they were having communion. No, 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 no. It tells there they were breaking bread and they were eating bread. And therefore, in Acts 2, verse 45, 46, he say, And they continually there with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, 
These are their meat. That means a meal. We, and they eat their meal with gladness and singleness of heart. So the word of God grew and multiplied. What was happening about this meal? Was the meal important? Of course not. What was important is the fact that they were having fellowship with one another. What was important was the fact that they were sharing with one another. Especially in the old days when people uh, were eating what they were growing in their yard. And I remember my wife sometimes when she had things in the yard and then she invites people. All she had to do is to boast about the things that they were growing in her yard. And the people were eating it. And so, see, they were sharing something. It is sharing with each other. We are sharing the things that we have done, the things that we do. And by sharing that, of course, if we, uh, the, the best way of sharing it, of course, is through a meal. Now, I lived in America for quite some time. In America, you do not make a deal unless you are over lunch or over a dinner. No matter what kind of a big deal you have to make, it's never made just like talking in the middle of the street, but it is made over lunch. Okay, we have to talk about this. Let's go out and have lunch. We want to talk about this. Why don't you come over and we have a meal together? It is over the meal that the decisions were made. And we know that Jesus, many decisions that he made, he made them while he was having a meal with them. And you can learn about that. In Acts 2.45, they say that the Lord added unto the church such as they should be saved. So they were not adding at the church. It was the Lord adding at the church. My friend, we think that we have to do the work, but our work is to be able to do the right thing between ourselves, between our spirit and the spirit of God. And when we are right, then the world will know who we are and the God will add into the church. I don't have to go Bible bashing people down the street and so show them that I knew more than they do. They will know because they can see that there is something different between you and me. We are sharing. We are approaching the whole thing in a way that has to be approached. It was God who headed into the church. It wasn't the preacher the pastor, the deacons, or the people. But it was God who was adding it. Why? Because the people were showing and doing the right thing. Why so many people have to be exhorted to attend church? Why do we have to tell people, how come you were not in church last Sunday? Why do we have to, why, why people so easily, they stay home from just about anything instead of going to church? I remember when my mother and father used to go to church. If there was a church somewhere down in the cave or down in the, in the, in the forest somewhere, there was a meeting, they were ready to go to that meeting because it was important. And the life was at stake because they could, they could have been arrested and never come home. And some of our brothers and sisters have died because they were going to church. Are you ready to die but to go to church and fulfill the kingdom of God? Am I ready to die and fulfill the kingdom of God in order to, to go into the church and do the things that God wants me to do? This is what is important. It is not important what kind of suit you wear or what kind of shirt you are wearing. Of course you have to wear some good clothes and if God gives them to you, why shouldn't you wear them? It is up to you to wear them and be proud that God has given them to you. But the, 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 the moral of things is not the clothes, is not what I say, but is what I do. And what I do is more important than what I say. Why do they have to be exhorted to go to church? Why do I have to say, don't stay home tomorrow, but come to church? Are they too proud? 
Why don't they go to church? Are they proud? They don't want to bow to see and sit next to somebody that probably they don't want to see and sit next to? Or maybe they don't want to sit behind somebody because it seems to me that people recognize me by my head. In church. So it makes no difference if I wear a mask or not. As long as they can see my head, they know who I am. Because that's the way we see. So are they too proud? Don't they want to be with the brethren and the sisters in the Lord, in the temple and in the house of God, and together worship the Lord? That is the important thing. It is in the church that the love of God is manifested. As they saints worship together and hear his word and help one another. That is where we, have, we, we, we are doing things. Because we know each other, we help each other. It is hard to help somebody that you don't know. But it's easier to help somebody that you know because you know the need and you know that when you are helping them, you are doing the right thing because you are doing really a good help. Galatians chapter 6, verse 10. As we have therefore opportunity, Paul said, let us do good to all men, but especially exceptionally in a better mayor, mayor put more attention unto them who are in the household of faith who are in the household of faith you are you are you are we are the household of faith because we have one faith one lord one baptism and we are coming for one goal, and that is the goal to worship and come into the presence of God. So we are the house. He's quiet here. Am I shouting too much? Am I overpowering you? Am I with my voice? So let us therefore, Galatians, Galatians 6, 10. Don't worry, it's only in page 4. Why am I in church? Okay. That's the thing that I asked in the beginning. Why are you here? The first thing somebody always said to me, how come you are always in church, you are always in the prayer meeting, and so on and so on. I, I never miss, you know that. If I miss, I have tell Pastor Neil that I'm going to see my family, I'm going somewhere, Otherwise, if I'm home, I'll be here. I'm always here. i am become part of the furniture. That's why I sit in the same spot all the time. I hope that one day there will be a hole in there. <laughs> or otherwise, I hope that one day, if the Lord comes, he knows where I am because I sit on the same spot all the time. I am in church because with my presence, while I am there, when you see me, I send a message to those that stay away for weeks at a time, that they are missing a blessing. In other words, by me being here, they must realize that they are missing some blessing. Why should I be here otherwise? And the anointing, uh, missing the blessing, and also the anointing to enter into the holiest of all to see the glory of God. Where are we going to see the glory of God? Right here. We are going to enter into the holiest. And I know that a lot of people say, but I can do that at home. No, my friend, you can't. Whatever you do at home is singular and it is for you. It is not for the church. Understand that. I hope I'm clear. Hmm. So that they are missing the anointing 
in order to enter into the holiest of his church. You see, when we are here together, like look at this morning, this morning, we start singing that song. I almost felt like going to heaven. It was a beautiful presence of God. Can you agree with that? Such a mighty presence of God that it was so powerful. And if you are not in church, those who are not here, they are missing it. What a shame. Then they feel sick. Well, if you don't eat, of course you feel sick. You starve. Isn't that true? And they also miss, missing the, the glory of God and also the victory that I get from God every week when I come. I have a thoughts in my mind. The message will come. Somebody will say something. It clear up my, my, my mind. It clear up the message into my heart. I get restored and I go home and say, Thank God you heard me. Hebrew 10:19. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, let's do so. Let us come together with boldness and glorify God in his church. Let us come together with boldness and glorify God in his church. To attend church is a command of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know that? Tell people that don't go to church very often that they are missing to fulfill the command in which Jesus has given them. He commanded them to assemble together. Where? To a specific place. Why didn't they say, go home and I'll meet you there? No, no. He said, go somewhere. And I will meet you there. Go to Jerusalem, he said. And go to the upper room. I'll meet you there. Why didn't he say go home and I'll meet you there? For the people that like to stay home. Because the command was to be in Jerusalem. Because Jerusalem is the city of God. Because Jerusalem is the place where the temple of the Lord is. And that's the temple, the temple of the Lord is, is the presence of the Lord. The church is the place, is the city where the Lord dwells in. The church is the dwelling place of the Lord Jesus Christ. Wherever two or three are gathered together, there I am in the mix. Why Jerusalem not at home? Because Jerusalem is the city of God. That's where the temple is. The presence is there. Why church? Because the church is the house of God. Where are two or three are together? I am in the mix. Let us therefore consider something. In the word of God we are told that when Jesus was taken up to heaven, there were over 500 people that saw him. Have you read that scripture? Okay, I'll give it to you. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 5. After that he was seen above five above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part of them they're still alive today. That's what Paul said. So I must believe that there were five hundred people. They saw Jesus taken up in the air. They also heard the command to go to Jerusalem and wait until I will give you, I will send you the power from heaven. They also heard the angel say, why are you gazing the sky? The same Jesus which is gone up, he will come back in the same way. And therefore, do whatever you have to do. That's what the angels told them. Now there were five hundred people, Neil. But when how many people were in the upper room? How many? Hundred and twenty. What happened to the three hundred and... What happened to them? How come there were only a hundred people, hundred and twenty, when the three hundred and eighty 
had a grimet, that they were not there, and what a loss it was for their life. They were not baptized with the Holy Spirit. They did not receive the Holy Spirit, that 380. They didn't see the fire coming down from heaven in a manifestation of the presence of God, which I wish I could see it today. They didn't see, they didn't see the speaking in tongues, here, the speaking in tongues of the disciples speaking in a different tongue. They didn't see all of that. Most of all, they didn't see, they didn't hear, but probably they were lucky, that they didn't hear the first sermon that Peter preached. Maybe they were lucky. Huh. They didn't hear him. But they didn't hear also the blessing thing to see thousands of people getting saved that day. They didn't see that. 380 people. What a loss for those people who were at home. Let me give a lot of emphasis on this. They did not receive the Holy Spirit. Because not at home. Why not at home? Because it was Jesus' command to go to Jerusalem. Did the 300 and thinking about them, the 320 were they, uh, no, 80, whatever, 380. They didn't care really what Jesus said. They didn't really care to fulfill what Jesus had commanded them to do. Or maybe they were too busy. But you know, Pastor, it was so cold, I had to stay home. Good on you. If you got to freeze, may as well freeze at home. You don't want to freeze on the way to church. May as well freeze at home. Were they too busy? Maybe they were. But then their business was more important than God's business. And when your business becomes more important than God's business, that becomes a big problem in our life. Or maybe they thought that they were spiritual enough. I am just above and beyond what goes on in the church. God gives it to me at home. So, because they were the temple of God, after all, I am the temple of God. I received the Holy Spirit. I don't need to go to church. Well, indeed, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are the recipients of the Holy Spirit. He dwells in us. We are individually lively stones, but we are not a full house. We are lively stone, right? Filled with the Holy Spirit. But we are not a full house. The full house is when we are together. Not when you are home by yourself. God blesses you, of course he does. Why? You are a lively stone. God gives it to you, of course he does. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is within you. And within me. And therefore, God will bless you, and he will bless me, and he will give them the desire of your heart according to what you ask. But we are not a full house. It is only when we come together that Jesus, the master builder, takes us and makes us to be what? A full temple to do what? A house to offer a spiritual sacrifice acceptable unto God. And please remember that. If that is done in the church. It's not done at home. If I'm in the church and I'm a lively stone, Jesus cannot build a house. To build a house, we have to go to church where there is many stones. So when you're not here, I don't know if I said that, but if you're not here, your stone, your corner in that house where Jesus would have put you is going to be an empty place, and therefore there is a hole in the church. Why? Because you're not there. There is a hole in the house. 
And you know that when there is a hole in your house, you got wind coming in and there is troublesome things coming as well. Am I clear? Are you following me or am I just going on my own? Now in Peter, Peter chapter 2 verse 5, you also as lively stone are as much a building up of a spiritual house in a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable by Jesus Christ. What are we? I am a lively stone so that I can be build a house to offer spiritual sacrifices before the presence of God. Hmm. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 21. For Jesus Christ himself, being the chief cornerstone, that means he's the cornerstone of the house that he built, the church. In whom the whole building, fitly framed together, grows to a holy temple unto the Lord. But if I'm not there, it can't be done. To have it be done, it has to be there. Don't you know that you are, 1 Corinthians 3.16, don't you know that you are the temple of God and that the Holy Spirit dwelleth in you? We are the recipients of the Holy Spirit that makes the indefinitely lively stone. The church is the temple, that a house. When we come to church, we bring the lively stone and, Je and Jesus make us a holy temple unto the Lord. We don't make a holy temple. Jesus does. When we come to church, Jesus is present. Because two or three are gathered together. When we come together and we all have a spiritual place before the presence of God, Jesus must be there. Because if Jesus is not there, we cannot approach the Father, my friend. I don't care how spiritual you are, you will never be able to approach the Father unless Jesus is there. Because Jesus said, I am the door, and only by me and through me you can come to the Father, and you can come in, and you can go out, and you can offer sacrifices of praise and have fellowship with him. Without Jesus, we can't do it. Am I clear? I sure. I can't do it. Jesus will do it. He built a house, and he's the one who opened the door. Would you rather stay home than let Jesus come and build a house? And have a hole in the hall, in a wall, and missing a blessing, a blessing. Why do we have to be together? Because it's very clear, Jesus said, wherever two or three are gathered, I am the mix of them. And he is the master builder. He is the door to the Father. Matthew 18, 20. For wherever two or three are gathered together, I am in the mix of them. I'm actually getting to the end, you know that? I'll be there soon. Jesus' desire to come more than it is our desire to have him. Jesus' desire to come in the church more than we desire him to come into the church. Revelation chapter 3 verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and do what? I knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and I will sup with him and he will be with me. He's coming for a meal. Now, if Jesus would tell you that he's coming to lunch with you, how would you feel? That's it. And he said he promised that he will be here. He's at the door and he knocks at the door of, our, of the church. There is where the sinner heart is be given restoration and salvation. 
He knocks too. He knocks at the door to the saved people as to the temple of the Holy Spirit to enter and have what? A personal relationship. The third thing that he comes, he knocks at the door of his house, that's the church, to have fellowship and enjoy worship and perform many miracles. So when you hear him knock, open the door and let him come in. James 5, 14, 15, if any among you is sick, let him call the elders of the church, and so on and so on. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. Will save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. If they have committed any sin, they shall be forgiven. John 10, 9, Jesus said, I am the door. If you come by me, you can enter in. He shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Yeah. We have a great manifestation if you want to go into more detail in the dedication of the Temple of Solomon. The power of the glory of God was so great in that particular manifestation that no one was able to stand up. They all fell ground, down to the ground because the weight of the glory of God was so great. Wouldn't that be wonderful if one Sunday we are going to find that? It wouldn't be great if we finally find that not the preachers or whoever is doing anything. They can't do anything because the glory of God is so great in their midst. What a glorious time. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 20 says, For the Lord is in his holy temple, all the assemblies together. Let all the earth keep silence. My friend, the cost of not having Jesus and not doing the right thing is too great. To deny him to come, the cost is too great. Let him give him the right to enter into his house, the house of residence, my heart, my church. God bless you. I think I'll stop there. Now, I want you to know that if you take notes, that's okay. But I do have notes from last time and this time. And if you feel like going into this particular uh, study, this is more a study than a preaching, uh, you can um, order the notes and uh, they'll be given to you and you can go home and read them and put add to it because I'm pretty sure that you can add more than what I have told you because the word of God is so great and so mighty. My brothers and sisters, what shall we do? What is our decision today? Shall we go have coffee and forget? Or shall we go and remember, put it into the deepness of our heart? And when we come next Sunday, we come with a full desire to see the glory of God in our midst. And that's what I would like to see. Thank you very much.